Everyone's aware in the system. Other clients in the system, for example, uh, the Airwork client could theoretically pull that data out of the UTM system and know, hey, there's another operation nearby, at least I know what's going on. So if I see someone flying, you know, a half a mile away, at least I know what's going on over there because I can pull those data out of the UTM system. Uh, so we can see now in the, the upper right hand corner, there's the, the NASA vehicle. I can talk about that a little bit more uh, as we get, get going, which vehicle that is. Um, and they're going to be preparing to fly. Flight crew's walking out now, probably to do a check. Uh, you'll notice over on the manager screen, the flight is activated right now. What that means basically in UTM sense is that they've claimed that airspace. They said we're actually going to be operating. It doesn't necessarily mean the flight has to be in the air. So they're, they're at the point where they're ready to take off. They've claimed the airspace. And again, everyone else in the system is aware of that activity. You'll notice that as the manager display, there's a little close button there. If something came up with the manager and he did need to close a certain plan for some reason, maybe uh, the team in the field lost their connectivity, uh, maybe something's going on in the airspace, the manager has the ability to close that plan as well. Again, UTM's envisioned as being an automated system. So as we move out of build one, which is what we're looking at here, move towards build two and build three and build four, uh, many if not all of these processes would be, would be automated. Looks like we got off the ground. Um, you can see the ground control station on the NASA side uh, is active. Those of you that have played with Mission Planner, all of that should look very familiar. Um, and on the right side, we can see that the, uh, the data available on the map display is uh, pulling in their position information, and we can see that guy flying around on, on the manager display over here. And again, you could build a separate client as well to be pulling that track data out from this active flight. So we've, we've uh, designed all these interfaces with, with different levels of uh, authentication authorization so you can pull out the right data stream. Uh, the public might want to know, you know, if someone's flying nearby that it's an approved flight, they could pull that information out. Um, and it's all available from a common platform. So I think they're going to fly about a minute or two and they're going to land and then we're going to do the same scenario using the Airwares uh, UTM client. Uh, so the key that we're trying to illustrate here is that we can have multiple clients performing the same activity that are minimally disruptive to their workflows, right? They can be integrated cleanly into the way they already do business, and then they can talk to the UTM system uh, in a clean way. So when we have our partners out for the Build One demonstration at the end of August, each one of them has built their own UTM client, but they all adhere to the same protocol. They all adhere to the same interface. So we actually have several companies that have already built their own um, interfaces to it. Airwear will be out there with us uh, using this out in the field when we fly at Crow's Landing at the end of the month. So we'll let them know in the field that they're able to land whenever they're, they're able. Looks like they're coming down. So out in the field, you met yesterday, if you were at the panel for the NASA, NASA folks, uh, when I was up here with Marcus and, and our other colleagues, uh, Marcus is actually the one out in the field right now serving as mission manager, making sure all this goes smoothly. Yeah, looks like we touched down. We get confirmation everything's good. What we'll notice on the manager display, if you want to watch the state change, hopefully we'll see this become a closed flight. Um, and if you want to look back and forth really quickly, you'll see them actually performing that action over on the uh, ground control station for NASA. They just closed the flight on the UTM client. We see that in the UTM manager happen over here. Again, a third client could be pulling these data also and know that that's the state of that operation. So let's go ahead and do play two, and I'll let Jesse actually walk through the workflow for Airware. Thanks. So I'll walk through a little bit about the Airware GCS and, and kind of how they're actually going to manage and, and implement this. So what you're seeing right now on the screen, the lower left-hand side over here, um, they've just uploaded